confused by SharePoint permissions, not sure when to use Microsoft 365 groups or how to control group access, stick around. I'll show you easy and exactly how to manage it all like a pro. I'm Allison Gonzalez. I'm a Microsoft certified trainer here at Primatic Works. And in this video, we are gonna demystify SharePoint permissions. You will learn when to use 365 groups versus SharePoint groups, as well as how to set up guest access and how to create custom permission levels for that fine tuned control. Let's start with one of the most common questions. What's the difference between Microsoft 365 groups and SharePoint groups? When you create a team site, with Microsoft Teams or Outlook, it comes with a Microsoft 365 group. And that group controls access to email, Teams, Planner, as well as a SharePoint site that's created. That's your basic one-stop permissions hub, that group. You can also, when you create that team site in SharePoint, you come with that group as well as the team, the planner, other features, right? The Outlook that's associated with that. But also in SharePoint, you still have your classic permission groups of owner, member, and visitor. These are customizable right within the SharePoint interface and are a little bit more granular. So if you're managing just like a standalone communication site versus a team site, or you need that fine control over access, SharePoint groups are your go-to. Controlling your permissions in SharePoint is what you need. Now, 365 groups are when you want that streamlined access across tools, right? Use the SharePoint groups when you need to create roles like reviewers or contributors with custom permissions that will work also that additional level beyond the 365 groups. SharePoint only when you are just dealing with a communication site, a standalone, you don't have a lot to do. You can have the 365 when you're dealing with a lot of people of accessing a lot of different things all together and you can control those levels simultaneously. And then a combo of them, of course, when you're here in SharePoint and you wanna lock down a little bit more granular control over them. Now, as a SharePoint admin, you can go into the admin center. You can go to SharePoint admin and you can come right here to the sharing section in policies. Now here we can control our external sharing. This is one thing you definitely want to lock down. Bring that from that most permissive down to somewhere closer to that least permissive when you are able to. Decide between that new, anyone, and existing guest, existing guest, or only people in your organization. Really pull that down. Keep that held tightly with that sharing component. This can really help you with locking it down from guest. You don't want those guest users on there. This really helps to lock those, lock them out. That first kind of level of defense here at that organizational level here for your tenant, for that SharePoint and your OneDrive. Now, when we move on to our actual site, you can do this both in the SharePoint Admin Center and then also just on your actual site to control these permissions and see a lot of the settings for what a individual user can use or share. At the tenant level, right, admins can define how open or restricted external sharing should be. And here at the site level, you can further lock things down. If a department handles sensitive data, like let's say HR or finance, you can completely disable guest sharing at the site level while leaving other sites open. Really, it's good to consider Consider a best practice of create a guest access policy and apply it consistently across your sites and always review the external user list under Entra. So going into the Entra admin to track to see who has access. Now here on our site though, we can control our permissions right here by saying right who is allowed into our site. I can see right now there are two members, myself and Angelica are hanging out in here, but beyond that, that was just for the group. Now I can come up here to my gear icon and come down to my site permissions. And now I can see, I can control elements for the site. So you can control both for the group because this was created as a 365 group. I can control the group users as well as also just for the site to decide, all right, my site owners, the test group owner. So the person that is the owner of the group is also owner of the site. Then I can see the membership or all of the members of the group are also members of the site. 
as well as everyone except external users are members as well. I don't have any site visitors in here, but you can control them and see them right in here when you have that. Now you can come right in here to add additional members and you can add members to the group or you can share the site only. So if you don't want them added to the group, you want to kind of separate a site person who only has access to the site and you don't want to give them access to the teams, the outlook, the planner, and all of the other stuff that's associated with it, you can just give them access to the site. Now I can go even further than this. If I come down here to my advanced permission settings, now this takes me, I feel like this takes me to like a the back in the day SharePoint <laughs> or older interface here. In my permissions levels, I can grant permissions to anyone. I can create groups here. I can select any of these. So let's say if I want to select the group members and I can decide if I want to check their permissions, if I want to even remove any user permissions, I can go in here and do all of those things right here in my advanced permissions. So let's say I come up here to my members and I come up here to my permissions levels, here I can decide a lot more granular, right? Look at all these options. Now I now have the ability to decide if I want this case members to have full control or if I just want to give them design versus edit versus contribute versus read access. So I can get very granular now incorporating my SharePoint permissions here in my advanced settings into those 365 group settings. So you can have all of it in play, whether you want just SharePoint, whether you have a group tied to that SharePoint, and then also layering in these additional controls to really fine tune who can see and do what, really making sure that people can't add things that they shouldn't or people shouldn't delete things that they shouldn't be able to. When we're thinking about it, we want to use 365 groups for access across our apps. We want to use our SharePoint groups plus our custom permissions for that really granular control. We also, good to know, we can control that guest access at both the tenant as well as the site level. And we also want to create those custom permission levels to really fine tune our user roles to really make sure that everyone has access to what they need. Everyone can touch what they need, but also if they don't need that access, they do not have it and we have locked that down. So if you're looking to learn more, check out our SharePoint playlist right here on YouTube and also dive deeper over on our on-demand platform in our SharePoint management class. Let me know in the comments which permission strategy works best for your organization, groups, guest, custom combo. I'll be checking out these comments over the next few weeks. I'm always nosy. I always love to see what everyone is doing. So I'll see you in the comments.